Hey everyone, this lesson is on polycystic ovary syndrome and diet. So we're gonna talk about some of the findings and research around how diets and different dietary selections can influence symptoms in polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS. So PCOS is actually the most common endocrinological disorder in reproductive age women and individuals with ovaries worldwide. The prevalence of PCOS is actually estimated to be anywhere between 5 to 15 percent. So it is very common. It is actually a multifactorial disease, but it does seem to be related to excess production of androgens or male sex hormones. So I'm going to first talk about some of the symptoms we see with regards to PCOS before I get into some of the dietary management. So one of the main categories of symptoms in PCOS is menstrual irregularity or chronic anovulation, so having no periods for many, many months. Another category of signs and symptoms is due to hyperandrogenism, so high levels of androgens. We talked about this before. This seems to be one of the causal mechanisms in PCOS. And with regards to hyperandrogenism, we can see issues with acne, hirsutism, so hair growth on the face and other areas. And we can also see thinning of hair, so alopecia as well. And we can also see polycystic ovaries. As its name suggests, there are multiple cysts in the ovaries when ovaries are ultrasounded. And then there's also this other category of findings we see in PCOS having issues with overweight and obesity. And this can lead to issues with increased risk of diabetes and insulin resistance. And I'll quickly talk about the standard treatments for PCOS before we look at diets. These include combined oral contraceptives, anti-androgenic treatments, and metformin. And treatments change depending on if the individual wants to get pregnant or not. So I have a whole other lesson on that topic. Please check out if you want more information. But the topic of this lesson is diet because there is evidence demonstrating positive effects of certain diets on PCOS symptoms and associated conditions. So this is where we're going to lead into different dietary strategies. So first, we'll look at individuals with PCOS and individuals that don't have PCOS and is there differences, generally speaking, with regards to their dietary choices. So PCOS often involves impaired glucose tolerance and insulin resistance. PCOS patients are at a higher risk of obesity, metabolic syndrome, and type 2 diabetes. We mentioned this before. This article, entitled Difference in Dietary Intake Between Women with Polycystic Ovary Syndrome and Healthy Controls, looked at the typical diet with patients who have PCOS and patients that don't have PCOS. And what was found was that PCOS patients consumed more high glycemic index foods like white bread and fried potatoes compared to non-PCOS patients. Now looking at other dietary choices, PCOS is known to be a pro-inflammatory condition. And Mediterranean diets have been shown to have anti-inflammatory properties. So in this article entitled, Adherence to the Mediterranean Diet, Dietary Patterns and Body Composition in Women with Polycystic Ovary Syndrome, or PCOS, looked at whether individuals with PCOS have lower consumption of components of the Mediterranean diet. And in fact, it was found that PCOS patients actually did consume less components of Mediterranean diets than healthy control patients. So PCOS patients consume less of the following. Extra virgin olive oil, legumes, fish and seafood, nuts, and fiber. And PCOS patients consumed more of the following. Simple sugars and carbohydrates and saturated fatty acids. So we're not going to look at whether the ketogenic diet plays a role in symptoms or outcomes in PCOS. So ketogenic diet is a high fat and low carbohydrate diet. Few studies have actually assessed the use of ketogenic diets on indices of PCOS, but in this article entitled Effects of a Ketogenic Diet in Overweight Women with Polycystic Ovary Syndrome, showed that after 12 weeks on a ketogenic diet, there was a significant reduction in weight, BMI, significant reduction in blood glucose and insulin levels, significant reduction in triglycerides, LDL cholesterol, and significant reduction in androgens, and a significant increase in estrogen. So very interesting. So important evidence with regards to ketogenic diets and PCOS. Now, there have been other studies that have looked at whether certain diets can influence the ovulation patterns in PCOS patients. One of the review articles entitled 
advanced glycation end products linked between diet and ovulatory dysfunction in PCOS looked at whether advanced glycation end products have an effect. So what are advanced glycation end products or age? So these are actually reactive molecules formed by the non-enzymatic addition of glucose to other molecules. That is what advanced glycation end products are. So it's just where we see glucose being added to other molecules in a non-enzymatic way. So these advanced glycation end products can be formed in our bodies and more can be formed if there's higher levels of glucose. But they can also be found in certain diets as well. And these can include chips, cookies, crackers, and some lean meats. So the review article found that when looking at studies in both humans and animal models, there are increased advanced glycation end products in PCOS patients, even without insulin resistance. And low age diets, so diets avoiding chips and cookies and crackers, lead to lower insulin levels and reduced insulin resistance. And there seems to be a correlation or an association between high levels of age, advanced glycation end products, and ovulatory dysfunction. So as advanced glycation end products increase, there is increased ovulatory dysfunction. So that was what was found. Now we're going to talk about vegetarian versus non-vegetarian diets. So this article entitled Comparative Evaluation of Biomarkers of Inflammation Among Indian Women with Polycystic Ovary Syndrome, PCOS, Consuming Vegetarian versus Non-Vegetarian Diets. So the question was, which one is better? What was found in that study was that non-vegetarian diets demonstrated significant improvements in PCOS symptoms. This included decreased pro-inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein and resistin, higher anti-inflammatory markers like adiponectin, but also higher triglyceride and cholesterol levels. So interesting to see that we talked about PCOS being a pro-inflammatory condition. We see decreased pro-inflammatory markers and higher anti-inflammatory markers when looking at blood work, but we can also see higher triglyceride and cholesterol levels. So very interesting to note with regards to these studies. So in summary, from what we've learned in this lesson, PCOS patients consume more high glycemic index foods like white bread and fried potatoes, and they also consume less components of the Mediterranean diet. And the evidence that we have seen so far indicates that there may be beneficial outcomes with the following diets. One is the Mediterranean diet. Another one is the ketogenic diet. Another one is a low age or a low advanced glycation end product diet, so avoiding chips and crackers. And then the other study also indicated that a non-vegetarian diet would also be beneficial as well. So these are what we have seen in this lesson. So in the event of new studies that come out showing that other diets have beneficial roles in PCOS, I will also make future lessons on this topic. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.